Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I'm just going to shut this down for a little bit. And I have to tell you, I'm really honored to be here today. Um, and it's great to chat with your president. Um, but I have to tell you that I'm a huge admirer of Ralph Hauenstein's. And um, if you've been in this community uh, um, for as long as I have now, and for those of you who haven't, he is just a gem. And um, mm -hmm. both as a human being, as a true American hero, I think, uh, for the things that he did. and. Um, I just adore him, and I think this is such an honor to speak at the center that um, was named for him. We also had a great conversation over lunchtime about anything from the election cycle to, um, to economic development leadership issues and political issues in Lansing. And um, actually, my favorite subject was political science in high school, and um, as well as history. So we had just a fabulous conversation, and I, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate being here today. Um, and when I was preparing my comments, um, really, I was, you know, the old saying of um, the more things change, the more they stay the same kind of came to mind when I was preparing these remarks. And um, I'm going to read you something real briefly. Um, the competition of other states in economic development is real, and it is growing. Michigan is late in meeting this competition. We are derelict in our duty if we sit idly by and permit this condition to continue without striving to do something about it. Anybody have a guess where this, who said this? It is, I'll give you a hint, it's a state of the state address of a governor. Anybody, a clue, when, who? 1949, Kim Siegler, the then governor of Michigan, made mm. this comment about the furniture industry going to the south and the auto industry expanding somewhere else. So, um, only to say is that, what are we going to do about it 50 years later, okay? Um, a lot of white papers <coughs> being written about Michigan and the state of Michigan, and um, another article, another, uh, Luke Glazer had his second um, white paper out the other day about what we need to do to make Michigan better. We have analyzed the patient ad nauseum, I think. Um, I, um, we, kn we know the patient has an illness. Uh, we finally have a budget, sort of, and a new tax structure, kind of. Um, so the patient is no longer at ICU, but we need to have a vision uh, from Lansing that folds into the vision that people have locally, people like President Haas and others, um, and move forward. What do we want this state to look like 20 years from now. Who, who are we going to be? There are bright people in the state who can do that, and I don't want to throw people in Lansing in front of the bus, but um, it's very frustrating to all of us who are struggling with, who have a vision for our university, who have a vision for our region, that you know, selling that vision or having somebody in Lansing provide that vision is just darn hard. Um, I understand the day-to-day. But we know what needs to be done. And it is more, in my opinion, than just passing another tax bill. Um, and it is more than you know, pieces and parts. Somebody has to provide a vision. Somebody has to have a mission. And then we can figure out how we're going to get there. And every one of, every, you have a strategic plan. I have a strategic plan. I'm going to talk about the right places in a moment. But we really do need to move forward. And it needs to be more than just being the cheapest tax state in the country. We talked about this over lunch, and it's very easy to listen to some folks who think if we just cut the taxes a little more, everybody will come here. But the knowledge worker of today doesn't go to the cheapest place. We don't want to be Mississippi or Alabama or Louisiana. I'm sorry, I don't want to throw those states in front of the bus. But if you're looking at where their people are successful, where regions are successful, Boston corridor, San Diego corridor, San Francisco corridor, um, they're not the cheapest taxes, no matter what the Wall Street Journal will tell you. Now, I can't market Boston or message and, and, and San Francisco. It really is a pretty high tax state. But by the same token, I don't want to market West Virginia either. Um, and we have to really decide what we want to be. We put the world on wheels. We put the world on wheels with unskilled, highly paid labor. We created a huge middle class. And those jobs are gone. And uh, they truly are gone forever. I mean, General Motors is going to do another 75,000 buyouts. Um, there is one issue of what are we going to do with people that have low skills and high wages, 
how do we retrain them? I'm not going to talk about that much today, but it is really at the end of the day, we talk about that at lunch and I'll talk about it at the end, show you a little video at the end. It is about a talent-driven world and, and it is a flat world. Um, I talked to a young man yesterday who just moved back here after 18 years um, living overseas in Italy, in Nizhny Novgorod, Siberia. His brother lives in Shanghai. He's lived in Germany. Um, he was in his car with his wife in Rome, his brother in Shanghai, on his Blackberry. Now when I moved to the United States, I had to dial up the operator to have a call to my mom patched through. You know, Now I sit in a traffic jam someplace and call my mother and say, how are you doing? She still lives in Germany. So it's a world where Beijing, Bangalore, and Baltimore are neighbors. It's, it's your world. You grew up with this technology. So you know, we can no longer figure that it's, you know, our neighbor is our competitor, our competitor is just not next door anymore. When Kim Siegler said this, it was Steelcase, Herman Miller, and Hayworth. Their competitors are now in China making way cheaper office furniture. So how are they going to survive into the next, into this next, in this millennium? And I think it has to be done with talent, quite frankly. Um, so, you know, I, I've done my um, thing about Lansing. I'm very frustrated with them. Um, and I'm, we're all looking for that vision out of Lansing. In the meantime, what are we doing in West Michigan about our part of the world and how are we trying to improve it and play a, a, a role? Um, I don't know how much you know about The Right Place. We were created about 1984 as a private-public partnership for economic development by a group of private business leaders. Jay Van Andel, um, Fred Meyer, uh, Bob Pugh, then the CEO of Steelcase, um, the CEO of Spartan Foods, the CEO of the largest banks, all of the, all of the people that built this university, quite frankly, decided back in 84, we need a better economic development program, we need a better economic development strategy, and here's why. It was enlightened self-interest, first of all, and that's okay. Enlightened self-interest is a good thing. But they said, if we don't have a community, a region that is successful, I can't attract talent from someplace else. I mean, Jay Van Annel said that to me one day. I can't attract somebody to a community that's not thriving <coughs> because people don't want to come. And it, yes, we can talk about the weather, but I can't change the weather. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things, what are you going to do about the weather? I can't. Boston is snowed in today. So, um, but even back then, it was about business retention and attraction but it was also about the talent that goes with it. So that's really why they started this organization. We are a private-public partnership. We, are, we raise a lot of our money for the work that I do from local companies as well as local community, uh, communities like the city of Grand Rapids, etc. We have really five strategic priorities. Number one, the retention, expansion, and attraction of jobs. The first thing we need to do is keep what we have. So we call on a lot of manufacturing companies, and yes, manufacturing is okay. They will live, they will survive, they will reposition themselves. Not all of them, but we cannot afford, for all kinds of reasons, to have all of it go elsewhere. We talked over lunch. Alternative energy. Why can't we retool our manufacturers to supply the alternative energy sector? If you want to make medical devices, they have to be manufactured somewhere. Do we want to send it overseas or do we want to do that here? So we want to make sure that our manufacturing companies stay strong and stay local. Number two, expansions. We don't want them to go do this somewhere else. So we, we probably know every manufacturer in this area pretty well. So if they have a plan to potentially go elsewhere and shop, we want to be sure that they call us first and say, make us a deal too. We did that with x -Ray. They almost moved to South Carolina. They were very close to closing the entire plant down and moving 300 people who make $60,000 a year plus out of here. So we build a package of incentives, local and state, labor training to, to um, tax incentives, to incentives on buildings and kept them here and moved them from Granville to, um, to Kentwood. Very important, they now have over 400 people. They're highly research driven. I just connected their CEO to uh, Paul Putkowski for potential internships because they want to grow talent here. They want to do interns with engineering students and grow them here. But they do research in Zurich, they do research in Boston, but their headquarters is here and we almost lost them. So we, very, very, very important. 